Hi guys, uh, welcome back to Kingdom Comics Live once again here on Facebook uh, via the magic of StreamYard and the internet. Um, this week's guest, John Bruce. Hello. Many of you, many of you will know local guys. You'll know from uh, either from the shop itself or from the uh, convention circuit here in. Scotland. Um, John's a, a local artist, which we'll talk about his work at in detail later, no doubt. Um, he sure. does basically any convention going. Um, but yeah, primarily we're here to talk about comics, so um, I'll let John do a wee bit of introduction. Uh, I've known John for quite a few years there. He was one of the first people to come into my store when we first opened, all of eight years ago. So, yeah. you know, a long, long time. Um, you message for Sean Staley. Hi, Sean. How are you doing? Having a good time, mate. Um, and at that time, John was was working in the cinema, and was the the artist I know he is today. No, I wasn't. No. So, no, I'll let John tell you a story about his his, his rise to work. Um, I've got if you've been in the shop, there are quite a few of John's pieces up in the shop. Um, he's you know his his his, his work, his hand solo. He's no, his hand solo. I beg your pardon. He's Indiana Jones, Jones yeah. Tenant, um, Star Trek one, um, Jane Silent Bob one, which uh, I have here uh, up on the wall, which is one of my favourite pieces. Um, so, yeah. How are you doing, John? Uh, I'm doing fine. Yeah. Give us a wee bit of information about yourself. Yeah, I'm just uh, back in from work, so um, a little bit tired, a little bit sleepy. Um, <clears throat> but um, yeah, I um, as you mentioned, I, I do uh, conventions. Uh, something I got into by accident. I uh, I used to draw in high school way back in the day, back in the nineties, and hadn't drawn for a long time, and picked up a pencil high and just a <laughs> long okay. time ago, long time ago. Well, longer um, for me for high school, I must admit so. Not much longer. Not much longer. Um, um, I left. I left high school in in the eighties. So. Oh well, there you go. Okay, you're ancient. Okay, fine. A few, a few, a few years older. I know. I know. I look like your wee brother, but that's just because <laughs> oh, of your, your your very impressive topiary. That's the grey, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. 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 So, so yeah. Is exactly um, the same. Yeah. Picked up a pencil. Um, and. Uh, Local people started doing conventions, and I thought, well, I could do that. So mm -hmm. it was Dunfermline uh, Comic Con that I went for first. Um, I shared a table with a, a friend of mine because we thought we didn't have enough stuff to um, cover one whole table. Turns out we had more than enough for two tables. So um, that was a fun day. Made a bit of cash yeah. and got some nice feedback. Made some uh, met some good people, and then um, yeah, I to say, say that Dunfermline Comic Con from from you know for, for being quite a small town. Um, Dunfermline Comic Con became one of the best small conventions in the country for me. The, the quality of the guests, the number of people that went, it, you know, it was, it was an absolute phenomenon. Hats off to to, to Albie and and, and um, Louise and Sinead who did it. You know, they, they did a great job, and it was great for the people, great for the community in, in Fife. So, yeah, oh, yeah, it was always a good day, and they used to have some good uh, some good creators as well. You know, so um, mm. met a lot, a lot well, of good people there. You know, Hopefully, maybe next year we'll be we'll get back to it. Hopefully, you know, once the world's a less a less crazy place, we can have conventions again. I do miss conventions. Well, that's it. Uh, you know, I, I miss uh, getting the autograph now and again. You know, um, the, mm -hmm. the conventions I do are primarily the kind of local ones. Although I did do mm -hmm. the the Scotland Comic Con. I was invited to actually be a guest at that because of the the top status. So, so that was pretty cool. So, didn't cost Excellent. me a thing. Didn't cost me a thing. So all the cash and me went on autographs that weekend. So that was good. Um, Excellent. But yeah, no, that was that was good. We actually had people come looking for the top artists specifically, so they knew we were there because we were on the website and they came along and they bought some of the the Star Wars sketch cards. That was quite good. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's an amazing story. Obviously, Tops is, is probably you know the, the most recognised trading card company in the world. So that's true. To not just work on on Tops trading cards, but to work on Tops trading cards. For I mean, tell us about some of the amazing. I know you've done Star Wars. Um, you know some some of the amazing stuff that you've worked on. 
Well, that's yeah, it. I mean, I used, collect, that. I used to collect trading cards back in the back mm -hmm. when I was when I was a kid. Um, we're talking like Star Wars, X Files, all that kind of stuff. So, not only have I worked for uh, on Star Wars cards, as Stranger Things, I got to work on as well. Um, Teenage Mutant exactly. Ninja Turtles, I got to work on as well, which was pretty cool. Um, and then I got to work for Upper Deck Trading Cards, which I did the X Files trading cards for them. Um, oh. James Cameron's Aliens, and I got to do Marvel um, sketch cards as well, which was pretty cool. So it's just like I say, it's, it's being a comic fan and a Star Wars fan, you know, to be able to now say that you, you, you know, you've worked on sets for these, you're, you're an artist for Star Wars is, is you know, hats off to you, mate. You've done, you know, I, I dabble a bit in drawing myself and stuff like this, but you not, do, not yeah, you're very good. I have something like that. You're very good. Not, not prolific though. It can take me several weeks to do a single piece. So, um, which in the comics industry well. is, 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 it's not, not a thing, but. Uh, Thank you, thank you for saying that. It's, it's high praise indeed from from yourself. Um, yeah. <clears throat> got, as I say, I know you were you wrote, uh, a couple of stories. I know you're you're a massive movie fan as well. Um, as I said, I was saying to Mark last week, who you know, you, you're probably the guy I know who has the most impressive um, DVD collection. I think you you, you, want, you know if, if every week you come in every month, you show me that you've got more DVDs or you've bought more DVDs in that month sometimes than I own. Um, so it's ridiculous. I know, so I know you're a massive movie fan as well. I'm looking at your your, your Jay and Scooby set there. You're a massive Kevin Smith fan. Um, I am a massive Kevin I, Smith fan. How excited my, my... were you to meet <clears throat> Kevin Smith? <laughs> that was an accident meeting Kevin Smith. That was purely by accident. Um, mm, he was not at a convention enough. Yeah, no, it was Edinburgh Film Festival. Um, he was kind of like the main guest. And he was brought his film Yoga Hosers, one of his lesser works. Um, <laughs> I, you know what? I, it's, it's for thirteen-year-old girls, but I enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, yeah, he brought he brought Yoga Hosers over, and we went to see a friend and I went to see it on uh, the first screening that was available, and um, that was pretty cool. We, Kevin Smith was in front of us, that was pretty cool. But he was going to be there all week, so I took time mm -hmm. off on the Saturday afternoon, just on a whim. I went to Edinburgh to catch another screening and it just so happened that the screening overran so much so that the next film was cancelled so he had to go and apologise um, to the the crowd that was waiting and of course Yoga Hoses was coming out so everyone just formed a queue and he stood and signed autographs and posed for photos fantastic so it was purely by accident yeah. I mean he's, he's well known for, for being very loquacious with his fans he doesn't mind Talking. If anyone's watched any of his, you know, um, Kevin Smith live shows or his Jane Silent Bob shows, he, he can speak for a very, very long time, and doesn't mind getting involved with with real fans. So, um, well, that's, that's, that's him holding up. Like, I'm holding up his Instagram with your drawing. Well, yes, he um, basically, um, like I say, it was a, it was a whim that I took the afternoon off, so I didn't actually have a copy of the print with me, um, but he'd seen it online before and liked it. And when I walked mm -hmm. up to him, I said, hey, you've liked this before. There's a picture on my phone. He's like, come on, let's get a picture with it. You know, so he got, got somebody that could take a picture of me posing with it and asked me to um, sure. post it on, on Twitter again. So, yeah, he's a, a very nice guy. Um, very big with his, um, very big on his fans, you know. Yeah. Which is big. I, 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 mean, I totally agree. I'm a, I'm a massive <laughs> fan of, of Kevin Smith. Much of his work, not. You know, not 100 percent everything. I was never convinced by yoga hosers, you know, no, his recent stuff with the with, with the hot dogs and things like this. And and then what was what was the tusk? Yeah, <laughs> it seems tusk. Like he's getting away from what you know what he's known to be good at. But obviously, I don't like to say things like that because then I get accused by random strangers Ooh. on the internet of not understanding the growth of Stephen of of, of Kevin Smith. But that's going to be another that story. That was a fun day, wasn't it? Yeah, attacked by strangers. That was a fun day. Yeah, yeah. It was that, that, you know somebody attacking me for not understanding the growth that's there in <laughs> Jay and Silent Bob reboot, which is fundamentally the same movie, which is part of the joke. Yeah. You know. Um. But yeah, always nice to be hanged by a, a complete stranger <laughs> online. So. so yeah. Uh, Kevin um, Smith seems like a cool guy. Douglas is saying big yoga, yoga, 
big fan, but Yogo Hosers was not his best work. I would absolutely agree, mm. Douglas. I think he's, if, if we could say what, what was his best work, I mean, I'm a massive fan of Dogma. Um, Dogma, I think that's, yeah. That's probably my favourite. Um, beyond that, Clerks is a classic. Clerks 2 is has some of the funniest moments in, 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 in film for me. Um, there's, 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 okay, there's moments in, in Clerks 2 that if you've watched, you'll know just John, if you've watched that, an evening with Kevin Smith. Some sometimes the stories that he tells in these make them into the movies. They're so funny that he yeah. basically takes them in. And there's, there's that one particular story about the, you know, the Lord of the Rings fan, which we won't go into here because yeah. it's a family show. Uh, family show. Absolutely one of my favourite moments. So, um, um, Chasing yeah, Amy is, is my personal favourite. I love Chasing Amy. Although, yeah. um, Mallrats. Mallrats is everyone's apparent. It's the gateway flick for, for Kevin Smith fans. People catch more. Many rats. people saw. People see more rats first. Yeah, I think Clerks because it's black and white. It was always seen as a little bit arty. Dogma was the first one um, I saw, um, and and I followed that with Chasing Amy, and 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 I, like I wasn't aware really of Kevin Smith as a massive name at the time. So I, I watched Chasing Amy about a year or two after watching Dogma, because I, I came to it very late, uh, and I came away with this nagging feeling in, in my mind that these characters that had been sitting in the cafe with Ben Affleck, I, I knew them from somewhere. <laughs> Not at the time, obviously, realising that, that, that Jane mm. Silent Bob were recurring characters through the, the sort of US universe. Yeah. Um, but then I, I, after I realised that and found out about the guy, I went back and watched Clerks, which I loved. And, you know, Clerks 2, and I was like, why would they make a Clerks 2? How on earth could they make Clerks any better than it was? Obviously, the answer to that is Rosario Dawson. <laughs> Who makes oh, well. everything better that she's in? Um, so good. But yeah, and, I've, and since then I've, I've watched basically every movie he's ever made, even the ones that I don't particularly like. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah. So that's Kevin Smith. We've managed 15 minutes of Kevin Smith, but this is primarily a, a comics podcast. Um, yeah. Why don't you tell me a bit about how long you've been reading comics? What got you into comics? Who your favourite comics are? Uh, you know, what are you reading now that you're excited about? No. Um, Talk to me about I, uh, I don't recall really the first kind of comics. I, I do recall at a certain point, there was always the, the Christmas annuals. There was always like the Spider-Man annual or the Batman annual or the Superman annual. Every superhero seemed to have its own annual, um, yeah. which was kind of like black and white and colour at the same time. So some yeah, pages were black and white. Yeah, did that thing. Sometimes yeah. where they, 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 they would use a different colour, like some of the stories would be blue ink rather than black and white, so it would be blue and white and things like that. Do you yeah, that? and they used to have yeah. prose stories as well. They'd have like like Alan Moore come and write a prose story and instead of a kind of comic book story as well. They had a lot of those as well, kind of fillers as well. Yes, I, I was I was speaking to them about <clears> another guy a few weeks ago about um, about Mighty World of Marvel back in the 70s yes. and 80s, and they did a the prose stories of a character that I'd completely forgotten his name for about 30 years. And and I was reminded, and I've, he's completely gone out of my head as well. It's like Night Stalker or something like that. Night Hunter. Um, Night Hunter, possibly. A night, the Night Hunter rings night a bell to me, or Night Raven or something, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They're like two page, two A4 page stories, but prose stories. Yeah. Like, yeah, they were excellent. So, yeah, so they, they, they would be in the. In yeah, the annals. so you. You get the annuals, and then there was the, the the British reprints, of course, of you know, um, Secret Wars, Spider Man and Zoid, so all that kind of stuff. That was that was my kind of mm -hmm. comics. Um, uh, when I was older, obviously, you know, the two thousand AD, um, the kind of the two thousand AD annuals. Yeah. Um, um they used to have the. Um, a magazine called Strip for older kids, which had like martial law and stuff like that in it. So um, those mm. were quite good, kind of like an extreme Judge Dredd, you know. Um, mm. But yeah, no, just just a long time just been collecting comics. You know, it's um, a, lot of, a lot of DC primarily, a um, bit of Marvel now and again. I'm not really reading anything right now. Um, been trying to focus more on books lately. Um, just because uh, I haven't read anything in, in a long time. So I've been reading a lot of, sort of film books, making of film books and stuff like that. So that's always good. Um, well, like tie-ins or...? Well, kind of um, like uh, 
the big Flash Gordon, big uh, coffee table book, the making of Flash Gordon, that which is pretty oh, fantastic. Yeah. yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, sort of big yeah, coffee table. I, I love. I love yeah. these big coffee table books. I, I, you know, I recently got into Struz an art book, which is yeah. just phenomenal. Um, yeah, I think Sean means the Bruins, possibly so the, the Browns at Christmas. The Browns. That's, that's that. the point of it. Yeah, yeah, the Browns. <laughs> our William. Um, our William and I, the Browns. I, I, I always remember they, they came out year out. You would have the Bruins one year and our Willie the other year because because they were you would, yeah. they, they were they were reprinting the stuff which was in the Sunday Post. So there was only like fifty two um, in any given year, which wasn't enough for a full book. So they would they would do them every second year. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's some years coming in with a wee. I, I, I do Johnny see that, Mr. Best when we were at school together. Mr. Colin Anderson, yes. Yeah. Good guy. Um, but yes, yeah, so our favourite comics, you're talking um, oh, Justice League, the the Giffen and, and um, Demetrius run of Justice League uh, with Kevin mm-hmm. McGuire, just some of my all time favourite comics of all time, basically. Um, I own sort of writing oh, copies. That was, the, the, that was the 1990s one where they. They, they, were, they were doing like three or four titles at a time, weren't they? They were doing it was GLA, kind of Justice League, Justice yeah, League, Europe, Yeah, they came out of the... They came out of like a, a, a Legends crossover it came out of. And, mm. um, but yeah, it was late 80s. But yeah, they had the GLA, then it became international, then they released Europe. Um, yeah, lots of different titles. Justice League it's Antarctica. Louise asking... Uh, I, no, I didn't remember that one. There's Louise asking if you've got the rooms yeah. of making of Star Wars books. Or I don't I know if she's actually have. asking me that or you that. Um, I have them, yes. They're, they're big, massive coffee Marvel. table books as well. Um, just a few, really... Few, few, uh, <laughs> sorry, I've got a few messages here. I'll just quickly run through. Um, yeah. It's Neil Campbell laughing at his friend Sean for, for saying that the Browns, um, Sean Staley blaming Spellcheck for the mistake. And uh, very controversial here from, from Douglas saying that our Willie years were better than the Bruins years, which I think is, is I don't know. Mm. Our Willie was like, our Willie's like stand-up. So it's like, you know, it's, it's like, it's like so you imagine, you're, you're, you know, imagine we, we went to see, together, John, we went to see Nick Offerman. Um, we did. Which was excellent. Nick Offerman on his own was absolutely phenomenal. The Bruins is more of an ensemble piece. So that's more like, in my mind, Parks and Recreation. So you had multiple characters, you know, you've got Hen being... Hen and Joe being Joe and things like this. So, uh, difficult to see which is better. Douglas, the Bairn, indeed. The twins Bairn. who have no name. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, primarily superhero comics, obviously, and, and fantasy comics that we, we deal with. I, I've, I've got much the same, like growing up, much the same as you. I was a few years ahead of you, so, you know, it was, it was sort of 70s Mighty World of Marvel and Captain Britain and things like that for me rather than Secret Wars, which I, I did get, but by the time Secret Wars came out, I was, you know, I was a teenager, so but I still, I still bought them, and I'm nearly fifty now, and I'm still buying them. So. Well, I managed to pick up a, a practically mint copy of issue one recently, so that was I was quite happy with that. Still has the free transfers attached on front, so that was good. That's very rare because it, the, the British thing of of taping transfers or taping gifts to the front of comics destroyed so yeah. many comics from the nineteen eighties. Um, early, yeah. early copies of two thousand eight are almost unheard of because. Everybody removed the, the free free gifts that were on the front. Oh, yeah, frisbees and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Neil's questioning: How would you explain your Willie and the Bruins to a non-native? That's that's probably a full a full hour <laughs> thing there. You know, I think you would start with you know, have you seen Still Game? <laughs> and you, you you could sort of find Dad, Pa, and, and Grandpa there. Um, your Willie to a non-native. I was I, as a child. I read loads of these sort of things. I read Just William, um, who was like in the English schoolboy version. You know, back back written in the nineteen fifties, I believe, back in sort of eighties. Um, yeah, Earl William and the Bruins are are, are are a peculiarly Scottish thing. Um, I, I no longer I haven't read them for years. I no longer get the the Sunday Post. Uh, even if it, is it still published? The I have Post. no idea. No idea. I don't know. Uh, Douglas Hamilton's willing to die on the hill. The Ur Willie's better than the Bruins. So. 
I suppose. Okay. Um, and Neil's actually asking for a podcast on its own to discuss you know, Willie and the Bruins. So we'll maybe table that for a couple of weeks. I'll tell you what, Neil, if you're interested, um, possibly I'll get you and Douglas on to, to discuss <laughs> the Bruins in a week or two. You know, we're here. Um, you know, Douglas is willing to fight for it. Her. <laughs> if you're free, we'll get you on. So yeah, that would have taken us through 70s, 80s. Obviously, at some point you become an adult. You still kept on reading the comics at that point. That's that's unusual. I, I know I stopped buying and stopped reading for a few years. Um, sort of, you know, the nineties for me when you discovered music and you know, girls and uh, drink <laughs> and and, and <laughs> things like that. Yeah, <laughs> drink, drink, drink. My father too does. I'm father Jack. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I had a few years where I didn't buy comics. Um, well, I was always a, a fan of this story before, but yeah, that's right. I was kind of your story. I'll, 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 I'll go. On. No, it's, it was it was somebody gave me a, a graphic novel, and I hadn't read comics for maybe ten years. It was sorry, in the nineties. It was Garth Ennis's Preacher, and and that sort of reminded me of how much I loved comics, um, and and decided to sort of get back into it. Um, um so. well, I was always a fan of the artwork. I'd, I'd always buy them for that yes. work, you know, and um, you're talking like Norm Brayfogle on Detective Comics always was fantastic. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, you had Jim Aparo over on Batman. So those were kind of the big guys for me, you know, I like to read those um, mm-hmm. and try and try and ape the artwork when I was doing my own, my own stuff, you know, um, uh, so much so that I actually met Norm Brayfogle um, and I, I, I find Gerald big style over him. Mm-hmm. Um, such a nice guy. It was, it was so cool to meet him. Um, but yeah, so yeah, did, did he so, pass away a couple of years ago? Did he? He did, unfortunately. Yeah, he had, he had a, passed away, yeah. yeah. And he had a stroke, yeah. and then he, yeah, he couldn't draw anymore, and then he, he, he passed away. He, yeah. he wasn't he, he was sixty. I don't think he was particularly old. He was no, no. young man. Yeah, it was a it was a crime. Yeah, it was a shame. It was a shame. Um, so yeah, I was saying the... hire guys. Oh, well, call Colin. Uh, Colin's at a local. Local comic creator, we we'll hope to have one again in a few weeks here as well. Um, I do a separate podcast on a Thursday where we discuss comics and beer called the Brew Gooders uh, with, with with Colin. It's, it's always worth a laugh. We we'll have some excellent guests in there. We had Dave McKean on a couple of weeks ago. So. Very good. Nice. Um, Very cool. Yeah, I think um, you talk about your favourite, your favourite artists. I think if, if people come to me in the shop. And, and talk about, you know, how do I start, where do I start, where do you start the comics? There's such a depth of stuff there that it's difficult to see. And I always say to them, is don't find a comic, don't find a character that you like because, you know, it can be drawn by bad people or written by bad people. But if you find a writer who is good, he will always write good stuff no matter what he's writing about or she. Or she. And the same yeah. goes for an artist. You know, some artists lift the book that they're drawing just by a dint of, of how good their art is. Um, so, you know, follow creators rather than characters. Um, it's, it's the best advice I ever give to people interested in getting into yeah. comics. No, that's true, yeah. That's Sean saying he started with 2000 AD, which is... is in, uh, we spoke, I spoke about this with, with Mr Duncan last week. In Britain, a lot of people are, are sort of saying 2000 AD is a, is a juggernaut. Um, you know, I don't think they've got anything like it in America. That's certainly not that I can imagine that's brought so much talent through. You know, if you look at your Neil Gaiman's, your Alan Moore's, your Grant Morrison's, your Mark Miller's, um, Garth Ennis, you know, these are guys now who are giants of the world comic stage. And then and you've got, sort of, most of them have got their started here. You've got the artists and, as well, you know, but you have Simon Bisley's, yeah. your Brian Bowen's. I mean, I didn't, I didn't yeah. mention John, John Wagner, obviously. I didn't mention John Wagner. Who, John who Wagner, Alan Grant, yeah. Bigger. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's, a good, that's a good uh, that's a good, title, yeah. Definitely. That's your, your friend cool. Colin, I think, who deserves a who deserves a private chat at some point. He's maybe... I, I think, yeah. Really he's missing. Well, comic it's shops really, and the yeah. record shops. Kind of comics in Kirkcaldy now, obviously, we sell records. And comics, so you know. Yeah, but back in the back in the nineties, we were back in the nineties. We were starved. Used to have to mm. go to Deadhead Comics back in the day. 
Brilliant. So I take it there wasn't a comic shop in Kirkcaldy at the time? Or Dunfermline? Mm -hmm. or, or no, nothing like, that, no. No, nothing, nothing like that. Edinburgh? Yeah, there was two in Edinburgh. Forbidden Planet and yeah, was... uh, Decadent Comics. Yeah. Yeah, see, I, again, because I'm slightly older, um, I remember when Forbidden Planet was the, the science fiction bookshop. Um, yes. Which was all. Yeah, I remember that. And see, I think then one of the shops became Forbidden Planet and then they moved around to, to Nicholson Street. But uh, yeah, the science fiction bookshop was a massive part of me growing up. And I, I'm the same. I, I didn't come from Fife. I came from, from a place called Wallaford, which is in East Lothian. But the same thing, I had to travel into Edinburgh at the weekend um, to get comics. So. Yeah, nothing. And that's why when you opened up. Right over that's when you opened yeah, up. Yeah, saying two thousand. Yeah, yeah. It's, I think that there are more independent shops now. Most, most small, most small towns in Scotland now have got a, a small independent shop, and I think it's, it's not been the, uh, the explosion of comics that's that's brought about shops like mine. It's more to do with gaming. Um, you know, gaming has has taken off. Tabletop gaming, Dungeons and Dragons. You know. From something which was reasonably popular in the sort of eighties, early nineties, and then went away, it's now you know massive, and that's why shops like mine are popping up all over the place. Yeah. Um, Louise is, is, is saying, John, have any of your favourite artists drawn drawn you to characters that you've previously steered clear of? There's not really any kind of characters I would steer clear of, you know. Um... I'm not, I'm not a big fan of like the Lobo and stuff like that. You know, the um, not really a big mm -hmm. fan of Lobo. Um, never really been drawn to that. The Demon, the um, not really a big fan of the Demon either. So the, the original mm -hmm. Kirby stuff, yeah. Etrigan, Etrigan is that? Etrigan the Demon, yeah. Kind of the '90s stuff. Mm -hmm. I wasn't a big fan of that. You know, but you know, it, it just depends. You know, so sometimes I'd get drawn into a. I think, I think, yeah, right. I, th I think it's important to sometimes. The, the, like the flip side of that would be that the, there are artists who aren't my favourite ones, who've put me off certain titles and things like that. You know, I, I know I'm on record as saying I'm not a massive fan of John Romita Jr. Um, oh yeah. And he did runs on on Superman and Harley Quinn, which I thought were, um, you know, I, I just couldn't couldn't read them. But at the same time, yeah. he's the guy who 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 did, who did, you know, he did Daredevil, The Man Without Fear. Um, which obviously Frank Miller's writing lifted that, so that you could see past the drawing not being as sharp as it would be from someone. I don't want to say think, better. It, it can depend on no. the anchor as well, though. Depending on the anchor, you know, um, you can see lots of different um, um, finishing. Anchor, you tracer. Tracer. Uh, sorry, yeah, tracer. The, the the anchor. Um, yeah, depending on who the anchor is, uh, that work completely different. <laughs> so that was a, was a title back to the B. Kevin Smith joke there. I so know. That was, that was the line from... from <laughs> sorry. Your mother's a traitor. Um, yeah. yeah. There's Colin, he remembers the science fiction bookshop. He's, he's, he's yeah. more, more of ages with me. Yeah, it was a, it was a phenomenal... I, mean, I remember the sci-fi bookshop. Um, yeah, there, there are two shops on opposite sides of the same weird. Yeah. And, and you have your comics and toys and things in one shop. And the other side of the road um, had the largest collection of prose novels, fantasy, that I'd ever seen in my life. And as somebody who, you know, I, I worked, when, when I worked at John Menzies when I was 16, and they had two metres of fantasy novels, and I thought I was in, you know, it was brilliant. But within a year, I bought everything that I wanted from you. Um, the science fiction bookshop, you know, authors that I'd never heard of and had full runs, every Robert Heinlein ever printed and things like this, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, the science fiction bookshop was, was phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. So, but um, so, so getting back to kind of, kind, of, kind of comics, there's not any kind of mm -hmm. artists that would take me out of a title. There may be titles I would not particularly buy, but I might buy their issue of because of the guest stars. So, say for instance, um, back in sort of like '89, Batman was about to come out, the Michael Keaton film, and I was a big mm -hmm. fan. And I picked up the Giffen and uh, Demetrius Justice League because Batman was in it. And then mm -hmm. it turns out it's one of my favourite things of all time. So a good guest star can, and can depend. So I don't really follow artists and creators as such. I just like a good story. Yeah. Well, I think, I mean, I, I think there are certain, like, I, I, as you know, I'm a massive fan of Garth Ennis' work. 
Um, yes. I think he's, he's done phenomenal work in his own right with you know people who, who maybe not familiar with the name from TV shows will be familiar with Preacher and The Boys. Um, much of the Netflix Punisher TV show was, was, was sort of based around Garth Ennis' run on Punisher. Um, he did one of my all-time favourite runs of comics called Grover Dead Charlie, which is a zombie apocalypse story told from the point of view of three dogs called Rover, Red and Charlie, which is just absolutely genius. So um, I, I follow everything almost that he does. And from an artist's perspective, as you're aware, I'm, I'm a massive fan of uh, of Alex Ross. Unfortunately, yeah. mostly covers these days. But he, he he takes comic art and it's you know it's, it's trans, transcendence might be too, too much of a word, but art is what he produces. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, each panel... There's, there's, you know, yeah, yeah. Each, each each panel is a work of art. You, you look at it and you think to yourself, "Wow, if I could draw something as good as one panel, I'd be a happy camper." You know. Yeah, but one one figure, one one you know, one cover as good as a, as an Alex Ross piece, and I would never have to do anything again. Um, never going to get there. there. There are some people who are, you know, at the top of the game when it comes to things like this, and, and I think Alex Ross stands alone on a pedestal. There are great artists out there, and I'm a big fan of Stan Lowe. Um, again, most of the covers that he does. Uh, Warren Liu, um, it's a great guy. Uh, J. Scott Campbell, um, you know, controversial as, as it might be, I'm a massive fan of Alex. Uh, Frank Cho's. Um, yeah, you do love a Frank Cho. A yeah. I do like a Frank Cho. He likes to be a little controversial <laughs> sometimes, but I think he's he's, he's work. I've, and I've got some. We talked about the, uh, the you know the fine art novel, the books. I've got several Frank Cho coffee table books um, and he's, he's a phenomenal artist yeah he does like to draw the female form cheesecake yeah he's, 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 he's like, like he's, he's got he's, a camel it's a, a big cheesecake yeah it's a lot of that kind of stuff yeah but once again Scott Campbell's one of those ones yeah, yeah. J. Scott Campbell's one of those ones you know he gets accused sometimes of his figures look very samey I can spot a J. Scott Campbell female figure from 20 metres away you know the, the, the shape that he does um, them, um, but yeah. they're also good, you know. Yeah, it's kind of like elongated yeah. figures, tapered ankles. Yeah, you can you can spot yeah, a Jacob. Yeah. Scott Campbell cover. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just going to break in one second, um, because I'm going to ask a quick question of the audience, because I did. If you seen, you know, when I put up my 30 minute one, I'm going to give away a wee prize this week to the to the first person that can come to me with the answer, um, to the question I've got, and that's this. Amazing Spider-Man 55, second print cover, much sought after. First person that comes up to me with, what is Spider-Man's real name? In the comments, wins this comic this week. Um, Colin's talking about uh, Garth Ennis, um, Ram V, James Tinian and Jeff Lamar. Uh, yeah, yeah. See, you follow the writers, and they're all good. You, you, they're all good options there. James Tinian is doing brilliant. Uh, there's Neil Campbell coming with Peter Parker. I would also have accepted Miles Morales, but next time you're in the shop, that'll be coming your way, Neil. Well done. Douglas Ross, a wee comment about uh, Douglas Hamilton. About Douglas Ross. Why did I mention Douglas Ross? Jesus, I'm obsessed. Uh, Douglas Hamilton, the way Alex Ross portrays superhero costumes, uh, some of it looks realistic, but still cool. Yeah, I, I, Alex Ross uses um, proportions, like he uses actual people. He works from actual people. He's got a friend called uh, Sal, who's been his long-term uh, Captain Marvel, the Captain Marvel, not the, not the Marvel one, DC one, Captain Marvel, proper Captain Marvel. Um, and yeah, they, 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 you know, they're not Superheroes are, are taller than humans. You know, it's, it's, it's a proportion thing. Superheroes are drawn like six and a half heads tall, and the actual person is only five and a half heads tall. So it, it, they're shown out of all proportion. Um, so yeah, get away from that. But Alex Ross, they look real. They look like oil paintings of real people. Um, yes, Neil, I know it's Peter, but Mel's Morales <laughs> is also Spider Man. You know. I would probably have also accepted, if somebody had went for it, I would have accepted uh, Ben 
Ben Riley. Um, ben Riley, yeah. Or because Kane. Peter Parker was actually actually a, a clone of Ben Riley for a while anyway. That was that was just um, or Kane, yeah. Kane. Yeah. Been, yeah, Spider Spider Verse. The clone saga gave us so many different ones. That was that must be the most long running event in comics history. That that ran for I might be wrong here. Um, I would have to check. I think that ran for 740 issues over 93 years, something like that. <laughs> it seemed... I, th- I think it ran for about two years, I reckon. Yeah, it must, must be about two yeah. years, I reckon. Yeah, yeah it was a long time. Ben, Ray- ben Riley, that's the one. Um, yep. He was Scarlet Spider. I don't know what ever happened to Ben Riley. I don't... He doesn't get the same love that uh, he died. Morales gets. Ben Riley died. Ben Riley died. died. There you go. This is this. Is, I should have like, kept up with the clone wars. Spider Man seventy five back in the day. Turns out Ben Riley was actually mm-hmm. the clone all along. Um, spoilers for a twenty year old, thirty year old comic, and uh, they killed yeah. they killed him off. Yeah, but he came back. He had his own title again recently. The Scarlet Spider. Excellent. As Doug was saying, Otto Octavius was also Spider Man for a while. Actually, he was. Um, Superior Spider Man. Superior Spider-Man, that's right. He, yeah. he, he, he killed Peter Parker and then felt such guilt that he took over the role because he's, he's not such a bad guy. Something like that, yeah. yeah. Yes, so, yeah, Otto Octavius could have been a proper answer. I'm not giving away any more comics. <laughs> it's only one comic, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> um, yeah, so you're looking forward to ever stop someone coming back in comics. That's true. That's true. Yeah. So you're looking forward to the, the Snyder cut next week then? I am. I very much. I don't know where we're going to be available to, to see it here in, in Britain. Um, I'm assuming it's, Amazon, uh, hopefully Amazon will pick it up. Sky. That Sky Cinema. Me, I've got. Oh, no. Oh, no. I don't have a Sky Cinema. I've maybe yeah. got a seven day pass. Just yeah. four hours, is it? Four hours and two minutes. Hmm. Fantastic. Yeah, which is, I think the original one only ran about one hour fifty, taken out, taken <laughs> away. Um, I, I watched so. it yesterday. I watched it yesterday. One hour forty eight. The credits kick in. Yeah. And then the two minute end credit sequence. Yeah. So you're talking. I, yeah. I don't think it's as bad as people say. Like I, I stick up a lot for these DC expanded universe movies. I know there is some ropey CGI. And, and this problem, it, this, this movie has great problems with Joss Whedon being brought in um, after, you know, after uh, Snyder had a, a tragedy in his life and had to, to yeah. step away from it. Um, I don't think they did the right thing by bringing Joss Whedon in and trying to, to change tone completely. And I think that's probably where the problems come from. But I, I, stick, I stick up a lot for you know, Batman v Superman and Justice League. I don't think it's as bad as people say. I, I watched them all over the past couple of days. I watched um, Man of Steel, which is just fantastic. I watched yeah, BVS. I absolutely agree. Yeah. The extended mm-hmm. version of watched BVS, which is, I think is a great film as well. Um, yep. Wonder Woman, which had me so psyched for Justice League. I thought Wonder Woman was fantastic. And then just was... thinking about the next nope. week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the Snyder Cut. But, uh, yeah, Sky Cinema. So, um Going to have to shell out for a, a seven day pass or, or something like that, yeah. Yeah, you hopefully, hopefully they'll do a seven day, like I make a trial possibly, um, yeah. just, just to get that. Uh, certainly, I'm, I'm not yeah. in Sky movies, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, I'm excited for it. I'll watch it. Um, yeah. I, I said, you know, going, going into these movies, I, I've, I've spent all my life waiting to see all these characters on, on screen at the same time. And uh, it's not perfect, but it's not as bad as people say. I've seen some bad superhero movies. I've seen some bad comic adaptation movies. You know, there are there are far worse movies out there. I, I would, you know, the hill I'll stand on is if you look back at, you know, Thor: The Dark World, it's no worse than than Justice League. Um, it's it's not great, yeah. If yeah. if you ever want a, a laugh, check out the '90s Justice League TV pilot they made. It is mm-hmm. a business. Was that with Fire and Ice? Fire and Ice. And, oh, and Maxim, so bad. Max, Maxima and things like that, yeah. Um, um, yeah, it was all, yeah, it was it was all the, 
the it was all the characters yeah. they didn't get the rights to. <laughs> You know, it was yeah, so, sorry. Guy Gardner, but with like Kyle Rayner, it was just oh, yeah. Shudder. What do you think of the um, like the never made Justice League one? We were we were going to get Army Hammer as as um, yeah. Batman, and you know the the Pete lad from the lad from the OC, Adrian, Adrian, what was his name? The lad well, from the Flash, Adam, Adam Brody. Brody, yeah. I was going yeah. to be the Flash, JD Katona. Yeah. Superman. Yeah, I mean that was that was that was Judy. Judy I think that one was a, a victim of the uh, the writer strike. Um, that it was, it was supposed yeah. to be going ahead, and never. Yeah, it was. George Miller, Mad Max director, was meant to be uh, directing that. Yeah, it all fell apart. Yeah, last minute. If you go online, there's a few costume tests. Uh, see Ryan Reynolds is coming back for Green Lantern. Sean saying, um, I'd I'd like to see uh, where you're getting that information, Sean. Have we seen that anywhere? And I'm not convinced he would come back. I think they'll recast Green Lantern. If anything, I think you'll see you see a different Green Lantern if they decide yeah. to go with a Green Lantern in Justice League. Hopefully, um, I, I, you know, I think you'll see Guy Gardner possibly, or uh, you know. One of the other ones, possibly even, you know, the original one. Don't know. Maybe. I want to see uh, Nor as uh, Nor Esplanade Knee Smasher, the Green Lantern dog from Justice League. Oh yeah, yeah. Do you remember Nor? Fantastic. Uh, I don't. I don't remember that at all. Douglas really? is talking about the scenes of the Fordham family trapped in the house, utterly superfluous. <clears throat> Snyder Scott can polish the tub enough to move in. I don't think that's fair at all. Um, it's not superfluous. They have people, like all superhero movies, the, the Avengers had this. You have people who are in peril so that the superheroes can sweep in and save them. You know, this happened in this happened in, in, in you know Avengers Endgame and things like this. Um, and it's called a you know a masterpiece. But Justice League do it and it's a third. I don't think that's fair at all, Douglas. I'm just going to ban Douglas from the page. <laughs> <laughs> um, was on his Facebook page the other day. He might be kidding. He's well known for having a wee joke. Um, that movie bombed so badly. The Green Lantern movie bombed so badly. That, yeah. And he's, he's established now as Deadpool as well, I don't think. Yeah. Uh, the extended was, version of Green Lantern was a bit better. They gave... Um, Bit more of a sort of backstory. You just you saw his, his dad's death in flashbacks. We actually got to see it mm -hmm. as a full entire scene at the beginning, and it was actually a, a bit better film. Not much, but a bit better. This this is what I'm looking forward to. I think in the Snyder Cut, there were so many scenes in the trailers for Justice League. You know, we we, we Barry with Barry Allen saving Iris from a car, and yep. um, you know with with with, with Cyborg Vic Victor Stone. Um, playing football and, and things like this. So many scenes which appeared in trailers which didn't make it into the movie and you're, you're left going, what's going on? Plus I want to see Darkseid uh, up, up on screen as, as a sort of, you know, not just a rumoured villain. Um, so yeah, I think director's cuts can be funny things. I think you've, you've said the same for a long time to me about, uh, about Daredevil, um, which was yeah. another turd. Um, not as bad as Electra. And this is what I talk about when I talk about how bad can, yeah. you know, how bad is Justice League when you've sat through Electra or Catwoman, you know, or the Man Thing. Or the Man Thing. Yeah. It was a Man movie. Just, it, was, it was an 18 certificate, and it was diabolically bad. Awful. Awful. There was Swamp Swamp Thing oh. ones back in the day and things like this. Um, yeah. Grant is saying the Daredevil yeah. well, director's cut was great. It was um, made as an extra half an hour put back in, much like the Batman vs Superman. There's kind of storyline that fleshes out um, some of the backstory a bit more, um, and yeah, it's fantastic. It's really good. Yeah, I, I, well just, I, I look forward to seeing that in in Justice League. We, you know, we can flesh out that story more time to, to Superman, less dodgy CGI. Um, you know, cut out a couple of those scenes completely that are un unnecessary. And, uh, got sport, it was see what, so yeah, you know, compared that's, to that's two a, that's hours. a lot. I mean, it's it's, it's 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 more than double the length of the movie yeah. if, if there's no breaks in it. 
then yeah, I'm super excited. Uh, and if you think about that. if you think about how much of the apparently it's only rumored there's only like ten percent of Zack Snyder stuff in Justice League and the rest is all Joss Whedon. So if you think about there's four hours, so that's fantastic. If, if you know if three and a half hours of it is 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 Snyder, I mean, we've only got thirty minutes of Joss Whedon. Um, who's 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 uh, yeah. He's a, a guy whose whose name has become a, a rather sullied recently. Wow. I'm not yeah. convinced he's ever going to work in the industry again. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, yeah, he and some of the uh, well, one one particular one of the teenage members of the Buffy the Vampire cast um, saying that there was an agreement on set that she was never to be alone with Joss Whedon. Um, yeah, not. You know, I'll say right now, I'm not I'm not insinuating that it was anything sexual or something like that. Um, but what it was is, is he fundamentally was a bully and rejoiced in, in making people cry that were in positions of subordinate to him. Joss Whedon's always portrayed this image, carefully you know, cultivated by himself, that he's uh, he was Mr. Nice Guy. Yeah. And stuff like this, you know. Um, so, yeah. Interesting to see these things coming out. It's all older stories, though. I've not heard of anybody from, you know, from Avengers Assemble or anything like that, or, or any of his more recent work has come forward. Well, it's, really. it's, it's just as week. That's where it started. It was Ray Fisher. Yeah, it was just as week with Ray Fisher. Um, yeah. Then it goes back to, like, you know, Chris McCarpenter back in Angels. You're talking, like, 2000s, early 2000s? Yes. So, yeah. and, and they all came out. I mean, Sarah Michelle Gellar came out and, and, and talked about it. Yeah. I can't remember the girl's name, but the girl who played Dawn. Um, Michelle Trachtenberg. Michelle Trachtenberg. She came out and, and, and backed it up. Um, yeah, weird. Yeah. I'm sure he'll find something to do with these many, many millions. Um, great writer. Uh, it goes back to, you know, I had this conversation about separating the person from their craft. Uh, from, you know, the, um, you still got to be able to enjoy Buffy the Vampire Slayer and, you know, Angel and Firefly. Um, yeah without, you know, we're not going to Gary Glitter on and suddenly throw away everything that he's, he's, he's created. Um, but yeah, that was, that was a shame. So yeah, very much looking forward to it. Um, gives you something to look forward to now. Now yeah. that Division has sat. Were you, were you keeping up to date with Division, John? I, yes, yes. I uh, watched it on the day it came out, yeah. So, um, oh, just cool. fantastic. We'll a spoiler warning now for anybody wanting, you know, it's been nearly, it's been five days. If you don't want to hear anything about Wonder, look away now. Um, oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Were you really disappointed you know. that it wasn't Mephisto and that Reed Richards no. didn't show up and you no. know, any of these no. fan theories? No, I wasn't expecting okay it to. It'd be, cool, it'd be cool if it happened, but I wasn't expecting mm. it to. And then, obviously, the, I think the director said sort of the day before, "Don't be expecting. You keep your expectations down," because mm. the internet ran rampant. And it didn't help that obviously yeah. Paul Bettany, yeah. Paul Bettany and Elizabeth, um, you know, they were, they were um, stoking the fire. Bettany saying he was working with an actor he's never worked with before, and everyone was like, "Oh my God, who is it? You know, who is it? Is it Cumberbatch?" Yeah. You know, it turns out it was himself. They said they were going to do a, like it was going to be that Luke Skywalker moment like they had in the Mandalorian, but n- nobody knew yeah. about it, nobody was prepared for. It. And then when it happened, you were like, <gasps> badly CGI'd as it was. You know, I think sometimes. No, fans will give yeah. you a, I, think I, I, I said this again, I think I said this last week. I don't understand why the CGI Mark Hamill in. Um, if they're going to, they want to use him going forward, why not recast it? Sebastian Stan's already in contract to Disney. He looks like a young Mark Hamill. He'd be brilliant as Luke Skywalker. Let's, let's just do it. Let's do it, Disney. D- Disney. That's it. Forward, forward this video mm. to Disney now. Yeah, yeah, I'll say, look, look, I've got a massive fan base here. We've got eight people currently watching. Hi, guys. <laughs> Appreciate you. Love. Um, uh, yeah, they, you're right. They said there was going to be that level, like a Mark Hamill level guest star, and, and it wasn't. But it was, for, for me, it was still, you know, it was, it was still fundamentally it was satisfying. Um, oh, yeah. I loved seeing yeah. White Vision. Uh, Again, this this harks back to a run in, in uh, I think West Coast Avengers, um, yes. where Vision died and came back without his memories and things like this. 
So hopefully they'll, you know, they can go along with that. He did eventually get his memories and his thing back, thanks to um, Simon Williams, if I remember rightly. Wonder Man, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to see him. He's he's a, he's a big favourite of mine. Marvel Marvel character who has yet to make his way realistically yep. on screen. I know that there was a yeah, there was a, there was a, that Easter egg. Yeah, yeah um, Nathan Fillion has as yeah. as yeah. Yeah, so on movie posters and things like this, blinking you'll miss them on movie posters. Um, yeah. Oh, speak of uh, to, blinking you'll miss. Have you seen? Did, were you aware that there was a sequel to the film Moon, Sam Rockwell's Moon? Were you aware there was a sequel? I wasn't aware that it was a sequel. I, I know that the, the, the guy who made it made another movie. And yeah. Said that they're in a shared universe. They're in a um, shared universe. Yeah. So that was that was weird. Yeah. So I watched Moon again. Um, the other day, which is just a spectacular film, and then I watched it's a phenomenal Mute. piece of work. Huh? Yeah, so Mute is on on Netflix, and that's the kind of shared universe movie. So, if Moon feels that's, like that's that's the one with Alexander Skarsgård, is it? Yeah, yeah, and Paul Rudd. Yeah, of all people, yeah, it was. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, it's actually, that's, Moon... that's on Netflix. I believe I've been watching that for a while. It is. That's where I watched it. Yeah. So, so it's so the Moon feels like your seventies, eighties kind of sci-fi, like your Outlands and your Aliens. Whereas mm. um, Mute is more like a, a Blade Runner esque type of um, sort of future scape. Mm. But then a, th- a third um, part came out, which is a, a graphic novel called Maddie, which is also mm. in the same universe, um, which is really good. And I recommend you pick it up. But maybe forget so, watching Mute. I, yeah. I'll, I'll probably watch it. I'm a big fan of Alexander Skarsgård. He's, he's, you know, he's, he's, he's a mammoth at the moment. I'm watching him. I'm watching them on Stars um, in the, the new remake of The Stand. Um, oh, right, okay. Where he, he plays the sort of dark man. And uh, he's very good, very physically imposing guy. So he's, yeah, he's very good. It's going to say no one stays dead in comics. Now with CGI and deepfake, you don't stay dead in movies either. Um, that's, that's actually, that actually raises very difficult questions for the movie industry because if the CGI gets better, you know, young, young up and coming actors want the parts. Um, at some point, they're going to be able to say, well, we can give the part to the young up and coming actor, but the CGI is there now that we can CGI in James Dean or a young Clint Eastwood, you know, Marilyn Monroe, things like this. Um, and, I th- you know, I think at some point that could become a problem. <laughs> You know, with them, with them using people, I, I would rather see a recast character in something like the the, the, you know, the Mandalorian uh, rather than doing some else. And the same with you know, they used a CGI Carrie Fisher, a, a young CGI Carrie Fisher in um, Rogue One, yeah. Rogue One. Yeah. There, there, there are actresses out there who could have carried the role. You know. Yeah. Uh, so Neil's asking, what are these two movies? Mute and Moon. Yeah, Moon. I raved Moon, about about yeah. four or five years ago. Moon is absolutely phenomenal. Um, it's almost a stand up. Like there's only one one actor in it and one voice actor. So Sam Rockwell absolutely carries the movie on his own. Um, but, with, yeah, 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 literally with, with a robot voice. And it's it's not a long movie. It's fascinating, and the payoff at the end is absolutely brilliant. Five out of five stars for me for for, for Mute. Mute I haven't seen yeah. yet. Yeah, Mute was yeah, especially after having watched it right after watching Moon, it was somewhat mm-hmm. of a disappointing um, experience. Okay. But it was fun to see the the Sam Rockwell cameo, all twenty seven Sam Rockwell cameos. Um, In Mute, that was fun. In Mute, yeah. Right. Okay. Fair enough. I will have to but, watch that now because you've intrigued me. Douglas is the end. Moon is fantastic. Hasn't heard of Mute. Uh, I'm not sure where I would find Moon. To be honest, Neil, it might be on, might be on Amazon. It might be on uh, my TV. I think it's on Amazon. I'm honestly Ren. not sure. That's on Amazon. On Amazon Ren, yeah. yeah, yeah. This this is the thing. We I've had this conversation with John several times now, and I've I've come around recently um, to John's way of thinking. I'm going to grab something before I go on. <laughs> So 
sorry, <laughs> sorry, folks. I'll come back to you. There. And it's that you, you watch. I watch shows like The Office or Parks and Recreation or Battlestar Galactica or, or something like that, or movies like Mute or Moon or something like that, and they're excellent. And then you think oh, I'm going to go and rewatch that in six months or a year or something like that, and you kind of get it. I'm, I'm, I'm recently converted back to the early days, and I've started refilling my DVD collection. Um, yep. I think if, if you like something enough, buy the DVD. These days, between Cash Generator and CEX, you can pick up almost any movie for about you know two or three pound. I, I, I just last week I got the uh, the Alien box set of you know the four movie. Alien boxing, um, for three pound fifty, uh, from from book, the book depository online. Yeah, you know, for a couple of pounds, I'll be able to pick up Moon. On, I'm not going to say the, the the dreaded word that I'm, you know, I'm desperately trying to avoid. But um, is that eBay? You know. Is that eBay? eBay, yeah, go eBay. eBay. Don't go to the other one. You'll pick up. The other one. Yeah, pick oh, up no, Moon there. I would say Should you watch another? I don't think. You, I don't think you need to watch them in order, Neil. I think they're, they're in the same universe. I think if you watch Mute, and if, 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 as John says, Sam Rockwell has multiple characters, you might not understand cameos. You might it's, not understand why he has multiple cameos. It's set after, but you're talking. Yeah, it's literally a throwaway scene on a TV screen, so it's not even like a walk-on Sean, part. So yeah, yeah. Sean, that is the film. The guy thinks he's going home, but I'm not going to say any more on that. For the risk that we we spoil the uh, spoil the, the the ending of the movie, oh, yeah. just been the Maybe. fourth film. I'll be able to just been the fourth film. Sean, I'll, I'll have to. I, I've got the Alien quadrilogy. I'm going to have to watch the Alien quadrilogy. I'm not pretty, I know you um, said that to me last week as well. I quite enjoy Alien Four. Yeah, Sean doesn't. Alien Sean 4. knows more about Alien movies than anybody else I know. Like he's got yeah. them all, he's seen them all, he plays the games, he's, he's you know, he's, he's a mass, I know Sean's a massive Alien fan. Um, all right. You know, I'm sure he even sticks up for Alien versus Predator movies and things like that. Um, Collins also all for physical copies rather than downloads or streaming. Yeah, I've started picking up Blu-rays, uh, steel books where I can, um, of, yeah. of my sort of favourite movies and things like that, so that if I fancy something, you know, there's always something to watch on, on Netflix or Amazon. And I've got, you know, nowadays I've got stars as well and um, <laughs> stars as well and Disney. There's always some movie to watch. But, yeah, sometimes you think to yourself, oh, part two of this is coming out next week. I really need to see part one. And if it's not available on any of these streaming things, you, you've got to pay through the nose to Amazon to, 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 to bring it. Sean's saying that's why he didn't say any more. Thanks, Sean. Uh, Douglas is accusing them of being a bit spoilery. I think Douglas is just spoiling for a fight tonight, so he seems to I mean, be... Moon is, Moon's, what, 10 years mm. old? So, I mean, you know, it's not much of a spoiler for a 10-year-old film. Yeah. Sean's going to watch Mute later. I'll give it a go as well, some point between now and next week. We'll, we'll discuss it. Uh, physical formats bring the cover art, etc. into your home, but streaming doesn't. Absolutely agree, Grant. I only wish that... Um, Laser discs had been better quality and caught on because that's what that's something that I love about LPs as opposed to DVD uh, to CDs and things like this. The size of the artwork and you know an LP is like a piece of art unto itself. Um, but yeah, the, with the DVDs and Blu-rays, I've got a few steel books and things like that. I managed to get an Akira steel book quite recently, which is is, is lovely. Uh, Douglas still spoiling for a fight. He's saying physical copies mean I have to physically get up and change a disc. What is this prehistoric time? I grew up in the 1970s where we had to physically get up to change the channel. <laughs> okay, there was no remote control in my house. My TV in my bedroom was black and white, and to change the channels, I had to twist a dial. So I'm looking. At, oh, oh, you have to change the disc. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Douglas. And the thing about the physical copies as well, you have all these special features like yeah. commentaries and whatnot. So I'm a big fan the, of commentaries. The, the alien box that I've got has got an extra disc for every movie with director's cuts and you know commentaries and things like this. And yeah. I actually I actually bought it because I was listening to as another podcast that I love 
um, is a podcast called Ty and That Guy. Um, and it's, it's, it's Ty Frank, who's one of the co-writers of the TV show The Expanse, yeah. and Wes Chatter, who plays Amos, the best character on The Expanse. And they've got a, a podcast where they talk about the different episodes of The Expanse. They started at number one, and they're working all the way through it. And most of the first two episodes, which is about issue one, were talking about how Alien was the direct um, catalyst, if you like, for the first season of The Expanse. If you, if you look back at Alien and see the similarities with The Expanse, with how spaceships are, are portrayed and how space travel is portrayed and things like this, um, I'll go on to that, but that's, that's, you know, that's why I ended up buying Alien. Change channel by twisting Adele. That's exactly what I needed to do, Neil. Yeah. Give me to it. Um, Sean's watching that. The now I'm not sure which one he's watching. Is that the Expanse you're watching, Sean? Yeah. Five. Episode five it is. Yeah. I'm assuming he's talking about the Expanse. The Expanse. Again, I cannot rave enough about this show. Um, the books are phenomenal. The show's phenomenal. If you haven't seen it, it's available on Amazon Prime. Um, five seasons of it. Get in there and get it watched. Cool. Well, I'm watching uh, Firefly again. It popped up on uh, on Disney, and I thought, why not? Yes. I'm going to watch Firefly. That's right. Uh, D- Disney's new Disney D- Stars, new yeah. Disney Star. Yeah. Um, so Firefly <coughs> popped up. Some great shows on there. Oh, lost. I think I, so I, I, I was I was I was talking last week about um, shows which I couldn't find, which I was going to look for DVD and have, have shown up on. I think I've got stars this week because they're doing a one ninety nine six month thing. And it's got Fringe on it, um, which is another show I absolutely loved and, and you know deserves a rewatch. Um that was a show that felt like a an almost immediate um successor to the X Files. I think that was kind of almost in a shared universe. They talked about the X Files in an episode of Fringe. Um so yeah. Yeah, it felt a lot like the X Files to start with, and then became its own kind of, its own kind of thing, wasn't it? It was, it was weird, yeah. Oh, Douglas, 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 Douglas. He's got four hundred DVDs, but he ditched all the packaging to stick them in a big folder. That's just, that's just wrong, isn't it? That's just, yeah. Why, why would you do that? Why would that, that's like going to a library and just ripping the covers off all the books <laughs> and throwing them, throwing them into. A filing cabinet. That's just that's just so wrong. I mean, it's a space I'm saver, but I mean, yeah. Other than that, oof. it is uh, no, 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 no. Oh, I have to get rid of that comment. It's physically <laughs> making me cringe. <laughs> so yeah, so coming out again. So are you, are you reading anything just now? Anything exciting, books wise or comics? Um, books wise, I'm actually reading um, Tom Baker's Doctor Who book Scratchman. Um, Tom mm-hmm. Baker finally wrote a novel that he started writing back in the 70s, um, and it's fantastic. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's very much the fourth Doctor. Um, every time I read it, I want to buy jelly babies and eat jelly babies. It's just bizarre. Yeah, I think that Tom Baker was kind of my doctor. Um, he, he was a doctor through about 1984. Um, for for five years or so. So when I first became aware of the doctor, uh, he was he was the doctor. So yeah, I'm pretty interested in having a look at that. So John saying he watched California Man on Disney the other week. This the new Disney channels have got so much stuff from my childhood to watch. I watched the Mighty Ducks a couple of weeks ago, and it's brilliant. Uh, Louise is saying she my son loves that book. Um, I'm, again, I'm not sure if you're talking about. Sorry, Scratch Man. Yeah, the one you were talking about. Yeah, yeah. Um, don't know what age your son is. I'm, I'm actually reading a book, which is I'm reading a series of books at the moment, which were kind of aimed, they're kind of aimed at a, a sort of slightly younger age. They're not young adult, but they're, they're very, very good. And it's the Rivers of London series by Ben Aronovich. Uh, going to be coming to Netflix soon. It's a bit like a supernatural um, branch of the Metropolitan Police that deal with the fairies and the gods that, that inhabit London. Absolutely brilliant. I'm on the fifth book, I think, at the moment. Um, Fantastic. So, 
Yep. Colin's asking us what we think of our opinions in the upcoming Boba Chronicles. What timeline do you think we will use uh, after Jedi leading up to the Mandalorian or after the Mandalorian? I think it's going to be after the Mandalorian. I think yep. you know it seems to be set after you know the instances. The, they, they've kind of retconned Boba Fett a little bit. Like Boba Fett, I always yep. thought was a bit overrated in the movies. He was a bit. He wasn't the hardest or something like that. You know, he was beaten by a blind man. Um, but in the second series of The Mandalorian, they've sort of established him as a complete badass by having him beat up 40 different stormtroopers with a stick. And then he has his knee so, rockets yeah. on his armour. What's all that about? Knee yes. rockets. I know. Fantastic. I, I spoke to, 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 to my friend Neil about that because he's a massive uh, modeler and they've always been part of his armour. Yeah. But he just never got a chance to use them in the original thing because I thought that was something they, 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 they made up, but it wasn't. No, so but yeah, I'm I'm very much looking forward to the book, the Boba Fett. Um, I don't think Disney have, have done a step wrong in the Mandalorian, um, as long as they can keep that quality. Um, and that depends on keeping the right. And if they can keep John Favreau and Dave Filoni, uh, yeah. sort of in charge of, of them, they're they're not going to go wrong. Yeah. Douglas saying wasn't entirely my choice. That amount of DVDs takes up a lot of room. Now, I don't know if she's watching, but that leads me to to, to, to assume that your good lady had something to do with uh, the decision to get rid of all the DVD boxes. Um, nine watchers and four went to school together. That's Grant. I'm assuming he's talking about yourself, John, Colin, yes. who's been... And Louise. Open, yeah. And possibly Lu Louise, yeah. Louise, yeah. yeah. You're all... Kirkcaldy High alumni, are they? KHS forever. <laughs> okay. Stay tuned because um, Grant's another person that I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to be asking um, at some point if he's wanting to come on. Um, you know, Grant, Grant's another guy I know who's a massive comic fan and has indeed worked on a comic himself uh, in the last year or so that I'm sure we would we could find enough to chat about. So um, stay tuned. Hopefully Grant will be on your screen in the next couple of weeks. Uh, Douglas says no comment. Okay, so it's now confirmed that he's 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 he's, he's lady. Just, just, just dealt with that. Um, we've all got a story like that, Douglas. For for people my age, it's mostly to do with comics, and it's generally to do with your mum. Yep. Um, the, the number of people I hear that had their comic thrown out by their mother. Um, generally speaking, I, I know most of them are talking nonsense because when people come in, they'll tell me that they had the first appearance of Wolverine and the first appearance of Spider-Man and the first appearance of this, and their mum threw them all away, which is very unlikely. So. Neil was asking what year you left Kirkcaldy High School. I'm actually, I'm just assuming it was Kirkcaldy High School. I don't know. You know. Yeah, no, it was just um, 93, end of sixth year. Possibly, possibly Neil would have been in the same year as you, well, a similar year, I think. I don't know what age Neil is, but um, maybe he just wasn't one of you cool kids. Yep. Possibly. Grant, I'm taking that as a contract. <laughs> You've said you'll do it now. It's just a case he sought out a date. Excellent. Um, excellent. Well, that's been just over an hour. Uh, anything else you want to talk about? Anything else you're enjoying at the moment before we, we wrap up, um, No, I think we covered pretty much everything, yeah. I'm just uh, away to work on some more um, Star Wars sketch cards just now. So I've got deadlines coming up. So I've got uh, one set to do now. And then after that set, I've got another Star Wars set right after that. So keep them busy. Sacrifices have to be made, Douglas is saying. Uh, Neil left in 91, so that was a couple of years after you, was it? 89, you said? Four. Oh, I said 93. 84. You're 93. 93 84. Jesus. And that was... Jesus. I, 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 I left school in 88. So, uh, yeah. So I'm still older. I'm still the oldest person um, <laughs> involved either watching or taking part in this podcast. So, um, Thanks very much for coming on, John. You've been an absolute no star. Um, I think Mark said last week, maybe one day uh, soon, because I as I say, I'm no, I'm not particularly interested in getting special guests onto this. Um, I get, I like to get what I like to call ordinary guests, you know, people that I know that love comics, 
um, that are, however, tangentially involved in the comic industry, um, you know, amateurs and, and, and things like that. So I'm delighted to, uh, just to talk about about comics in general. Um, so yeah, Mark, I think Mark suggested that maybe at some point in the future the three of us could come on and do a, a co-conversation <coughs> where we can discuss the merits of um, Grant Morrison. And, and Alan Moore and um, various other people. And Alan Moore and various other people. So um, hopefully you'll, you'll accept the invitation to come back on at a future date. We can, oh, we can definitely, visit. yes. Um, Happy to yeah, come back. It's on. been great. People, it's been delightful talking to you. I didn't get a chance to talk about the new comics that are out this month, this week, but there isn't an awful lot, to be honest with you. If you are interested in, in my picks for the week, uh, I will, as usual, be putting them out on the Brugaders podcast, which I do on a Thursday night with Colin and Jeff, where we talk more about comics and beer. You can find them on Facebook as well. Um, it's, it's a great laugh. We, you know, we talk, we drink beer. It's We've usually got a creative mind in it as well. Uh, as Neil saying, thanks to, thanks to us, thanks to you, Neil. Thanks to all of you for watching. This will be up on the Facebook page immediately after we come off here. Um, it'll be there for at least a week and it will be archived okay, on YouTube if you want to, to watch it again. In the meantime, let me sign off for the week. Go away and get some things done. Hi, and uh, I'll see you all next week. Cheers, guys. <laughs>